Good morning. Uh, what a beautiful day, amen. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Um, more importantly, happy Father's Day to the most important father, amen. God Almighty. Uh, before we go into prayer requests, we will go into announcements real quick. The only announcement I have is next weekend is our Christ in the Crisis ride. Um, it will be held at the diner over here. All vehicles welcome. All proceeds go to uh, Taylor Fitzgerald. Um, she is dealing with cancer. So our Christ in the Crisis ride is our sixth annual one. And... Uh, so far, all but my grandmother have been healed completely, so it's a great thing. Come, be involved. Uh, we're having fried chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans, so. Oh, you, I keep forgetting the noodles. She's all about the carbs, so we're having noodles too. Um, bake auction, and uh, we will ride to the cross. And back, that's all I got on that. Prayer request this morning. Barry Naney still? Dan Harrelman. Dan, Dan Harrelman and his family? Gerald Horn. Gerald Horn. Okay. Um... Pray for Daniel and Ashley Gonzalez. Um, they are trying, and the girls, they are trying to get to Mexico, and it has been a fiasco. So they really need the Lord to intervene. So keep them in prayer today. They, we need a flight. Shots tomorrow? I do those in the garage. Oh, okay. Yes, my son and future daughter-in-law uh, for traveling mercies. Anything else? We had a fallen brother and maybe a couple others injured in Juliet. We don't know yet. Uh, so keep them in prayer and their families. Um, anything else? Anything else? What? There is a lot this morning, but you know what? We serve a big God, amen? There ain't a lot for him. All right. Everybody, oh, keep my wife in prayer as we go. We've got a test she's going to have to take. I'll leave it at that, but keep her in prayer on that. Uh, uh, not a medical test. Anything else? Yes, yes, traveling mercies for Ron Rodney. All right, anything else? We got a lot. All right, let's get started. Please stand, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning. Humbly but boldly, Lord. Lord, we ask for all these prayer requests. There's so many, Lord, I'm not going to get into names. Lord, you know them. You know each and everybody's heart in here. Lord, you know what's going on. Lord, we just ask that you touch each and every one of these prayer requests. Lord, that you put your special hand on it. Lord, we're going to leave out of here today knowing that each and every one of these prayer requests is in your hands. We're going to leave out of here without a worry. Lord, we know that you're going to take care of it. We know that it, when we bring something to you, it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Lord, we just pray for the traveling mercy. Lord, we, we pray for the sick. We pray for the afflicted, Lord. We pray for those that, we pray for our country. Lord, I just ask that you show yourself and reveal yourself in each and every one of these. Lord, that you may be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. All right, you may be seated. Amen. Maybe seated and we'll take up the offering.
Brothers, want anyone to ask the blessing? Yes, we do, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Amen. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
Hey, I've got one more big prayer. I'm still praying for a full stage up here, amen? So I don't got to stand in front of you. You don't want to look at me. You got to look at me through the sermon. But I pray that one day the Lord's going to bring us a worship team, amen? Man. All right, Rodney. Everybody please stand. Let's go to the Lord and some worship. Praise.
As your small business changes, your business insurance should too. It's time to get a second opinion. I'm so sorry. We did everything we could. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing And you're desperate for some healing Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can say Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he Can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Well, Rodney let out the title to my message today, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Man, have I been dealing with that. I've had a, had a surgery and cannot use my right arm. Well, I'm not supposed to. And I've been 
you're doing okay. But I want to start in Scripture today, in Philippians 2. I've been kind of stuck here, haven't I? Lord won't let me leave Philippians 2 right now. I'm going to start in verse 12. If you have your Bibles, join with me. If not, there's Bibles in front of you. Should be. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. Philippians 2, verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault in a warped and corrupt generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Please join with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you open our hearts and minds this morning. Lord, that you make us receptive. Lord, that you get your point across this morning through me, Lord, that you leave me out of it, that you use me, Lord, that we walk out of here different than we came in. Lord, we thank you for these messages. We thank you for what you bring to us. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. So, don't sweat the small stuff. Boy, that's, that rings off the tongue, don't it? Don't sweat the small stuff. But man, that is not an easy thing to do. We're in a world now where it seems like everybody sweats the small stuff. They don't let anything roll off of them. But Paul tells us here, do everything without grumbling or arguing. But it seems like that's all I see. It's grumbling, moaning, arguing in the church body. We don't see, well, what is it I always say about going to Walmart and seeing that Christian with their head down and they're just getting their things and they're doing it and you ask them how they are and the first thing they say is, oh, I'm good. But really they're sweating the small stuff inside of them and they're not really good. Because if they were good, they'd have their heads up and they'd be smiling and they'd be walking in the light. And you wouldn't see that head down Christian just beat up by the day. Amen? One thing God wants us to realize this morning is that we don't want to lose our happiness over the small things in life. It's so quick to become angry over such a small thing, ain't it? Man, I've noticed that in the past couple weeks, how easily I can become angry over something so small just because I was so used to being able to do something, and then it was taken away where I couldn't do it so easily. Amen? I mean, we don't realize how good we have it until we don't have it. Amen? And one thing about being a Christian is everything to us should be the small stuff. Right? 
Our God's big, isn't he? Then why do we sweat the small stuff? We sweat the small stuff because of our flesh. The word says that our flesh is weak. And I'll tell you who loves to dwell in the small stuff. The enemy likes to dwell in the small stuff. He works very well with the small stuff because you know what? If you pile up enough small stuff in life, guess what you end up with? If I, if I go into my daughter's room and she started throwing clothes on the floor, and some of you know my daughters, they throw these clothes on the floor and it starts out just a small problem and I go in there and I say, you know what, you need to clean up your room. And it would take her to what, a couple minutes, throw some clothes in a basket, bring them down. But she likes to just leave it. And the next thing I go up there, that small little stuff that we had is now a mound that is as tall as me in the corner. I didn't even know the girl had that many clothes. We need to throw some stuff away, man. <laughs> nah, we better not get into that. Anyways. The small little piles in life keep piling up until it becomes this overwhelming problem, doesn't it? If we're real honest with ourselves, that's the way it ends up. We start sweating these small things all the time instead of just letting them roll off. And I'm not saying we forget about the small little problems, no, because that doesn't get us anywhere. When I say let them roll off, I'm saying let them roll off because we know God's got this, amen? Amen. I said, God's got this, amen? amen? I live by those words. You know, I want you to understand that you can get so distracted in life by the small things that happen. And a lot of times, we end up in our own little pity party, don't we? We've got all these little small things going on, and next thing you know, it opens up this pity party for Danny. Oh, I can't do this. I've got that going on. And it's always me, 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 right? And we about all the other people in the world that are dealing with so much stuff bigger than what we're dealing with at the time, don't we? That's why we can't focus on the small things in life. You know, people like to trust God when it's this huge problem in their life and everything's utter chaos and but yet we can't trust him with the little band-aids of life. It's the small stuff. Man, I I've learned something over the last couple weeks is I got to trust other people to be able to handle things for me. Amen? That's a hard thing to do, especially as a male, because we're like, well, they're just not going to do it right. Well, how do you know? Did you let them? One thing I know about God Almighty is he's going to get it right. Amen? Amen? He's going to do it better than I could, amen? Everything I do without him ends up horrible. So why not just let him handle it? Why not when that small thing comes in life, why not say, you know what? Why am I even fretting over this? I've never caught myself doing that. I've never caught myself saying, God, why am I fretting over this little thing? Until this message came to me, and I was like, you know what? Why am I so aggravated and losing so much precious time being angry over such a small, minute problem that in the grand scheme of things probably isn't a problem at all? Amen? You know, something I've found in life is it's usually the small little irritations in life 
that cause you to lose your happiness. I've been stuck on this happiness kick, haven't I? I'm about people having joy. You want to know why I'm about that? Because that's what the Father's about. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to have joy unspeakable. He wants us to have peace in our life. He wants you to be happy. Does that mean everything's easy? No. Does that mean small stuff's going to pile up all the time? For sure it is. The Bible says there will be tribulations in this life. It's all about how we handle it. See, that's one thing I love about God is he lets me handle some things. I, I should say sometimes I love that. Sometimes I wish he would just kick me out of the way. But I have to go to him and I have to say, you know what, God? This is on you. I can't handle it. I don't want nothing to do with it. I ain't losing my joy over it. And just watch him work because I'll tell you what, if you'll do that, if you'll just say, you know what? I'm not going to get caught grumbling. I'm not going to get caught arguing over some small little petty thing because I want joy in my life. But most of all, as a Christian, as I've thought about this for this message, I thought, man, when I get caught arguing and grumbling by a non-believer or even other Christians, Am I being like Christ? No. Am I, am I setting a bad example? For sure I am. I wouldn't want to, you know, we want everybody to have what we have, right? We want everybody to have the joy of the Lord in their life. We want everybody to have Christ. But then we forget to show them that what Christ's really about. Because we are his hands and feet. And if I'm out arguing and sweating the small things in life, man, if I was a non-believer looking in, I'd be like, man, I don't want nothing to do with that. If that's what it's about. But that's not truly what it's about, is it? It's about being able to go to God in the small things. It's about being able to go to God and trusting him to handle things. It's about never being alone. It's about knowing that he's there. It's about being happy. Man, one thing I was before I was a Christian was unhappy. All the time. I may have looked happy, but I was unhappy all the time. So now that I'm a Christian, I don't want to spend my life like that. And neither does he want us to spend our life that way. Amen? I want to talk about a couple of them. Somebody cuts you off in the middle of the road when you're trying to make a turn and you're running late for work. Do you lose your happiness? Come on, be honest this morning. Yeah, I done lost my happiness. I'm mad, but really, in the grand scheme of things, you probably don't end up late for work. You didn't end up in a crash. So, really, was it that bad? No. But our flesh is so quick to react. And I believe that some of the stuff, and, and some of you haven't heard the past sermons, but they are online. Some of the stuff we've been talking about over the last couple weeks is about keeping this joy and this happiness in our life. And not sweating the small things is just another thing to add in our toolbox because we can't let these little things of life get to us. I remember when I was a children's pastor or a youth pastor and I used to tell them, I said, imagine this, you go out for school. You go to get on your bicycle, and you have a flat tire. You're going to be late for school. Now you got to walk. You have no air pump. You try, if you do, you try to air it up, and it won't hold any air, so you're walking to school. I said, you know what might have happened in between that time that you were delayed? 
an accident that you could have been involved in. That could have been God doing something in your life. And here you are, over something small, so angry, and he might have been working in you. And it's not might have. He's always working in us, amen? Ooh, women, here's one for you. You're having a bad hair day. Or the clothes you put on don't fit anymore. I've been around for that. <laughs> I've been around for them bad hair days, amen? Do you lose your happiness? Man, I have watched women go from zero to mean in a matter of a bad hair day. You ain't leaving the house. I barely got out the house this morning. I had to go to Walmart and buy different socks before she would let me back up here this morning. Amen. I didn't have any ankle socks. I had to buy ankle socks. We're so easy to lose our happiness. Man, and I know about that clothes thing. I ain't got nothing to wear. They don't fit me. I'm always just throw something on. I, I don't come in here looking good, obviously. I'm here in a pair of shorts and a cut-off tee because it ain't about that. It ain't about that. It's about getting here, amen? It's about being here. It's about doing God's will. Quit sweating the small stuff. For the kids in the house, which we only have two, Patience little toy breaks. Or her sister takes the toy from her. Makes you mad, don't it? See? The little things. I've watched my grandkids fight over a green truck when they got ten green trucks. But they have to have the one green truck. Lose happiness over the little things in life. Paul says in Philippians 3, 7, I didn't put this one up. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. There's some things in life that I don't have anymore that I thought were really, really valuable to me. And I got really, really angry when they were taken away. But in the grand scheme of things, they were taken away from me for a reason. And I got more joy out of those things leaving my life and Christ coming into it. And that's what Paul says there. He says, once, once I thought these things were valuable. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Man, there were so many things in my life that were wrapped up that were worthless. But now that Christ is here, why do I let these little things keep slipping back in? That's the question we need to ask ourselves today. Why do I keep letting these little things creep back into my life? So what was the most important thing, don't answer this, just in your head. What was the most important thing to you before you met Jesus Christ? That was weird because when this falls into our Wednesday night stuff, don't it? Wednesday night we're doing a Tim Tebow thing and this kind of falls into it. But maybe it was your work. Maybe it's your whole career. Maybe it was making lots of money. Maybe it was being the coolest person on the block. Maybe it was having more than the neighbor had. Amen? Maybe it was uh, getting a date with the hot girl or the hot guy. 
Maybe it was having security or being famous. But Paul tells us all those things don't matter anymore. They don't matter. Because you want to know why? Because I have Jesus Christ and his, God's word says that all things I can do in him, right? It says all things will be handled. He says that he will give me the desires of my heart. He says that all my needs will be met. Man, what more do I need? I don't need anything. I have glory in my future. I have eternity in my future. When, when we get Jesus Christ and he grabs a hold of us, there's no joy comparable to that. There's no joy, and you know it, from the time that you, when you sat down on your knees and you gave everything over to Christ, and you walked up with that, and you got up and you, all that weight was gone. There is no joy ever that I have found in this life that is greater than that joy. I've been high on a lot of things, but there ain't nothing better than that. Now let's talk about what keeps us from developing this habit. What keeps us from sweating the small stuff. It's the culture we live in. We let the culture get inside of us instead of keeping the word of God where it should be. Come on, be honest this morning. I do it sometimes. There's times I let this culture we live in in this world, this, Paul said in our original text, he said this warped generation. We let it get inside. Every day, there are thousands of messages that come across your TV screen, your radio, for all these things, all these things that we think we need. Mine was this golf cart that we just bought. And I'm telling you, God has been working with me on some patience and not sweating the small stuff. And I, I mentioned him last time, so I won't mention him this week, but a guy all week has told me, don't sweat the small stuff. And man, I was like, if that ain't proof that I need to be preaching on what I'm preaching on this week, I bet you he's told me a hundred times this week, don't sweat the small stuff because I'm trying to get this golf cart legal so you can drive in town. Because you can do that now. It's expensive. They charge you way too much. But, and it just seemed like one little small thing after another. But I, I wanted this thing, right? And I, and I wanted it in my time. I want it done now. And man, he showed me it ain't going to be in your time. It's going to be when the guy gets around to doing it. It cost me, I think, 60 bucks just for really nothing because I got in a hurry and wasted it. Because I was sweating the small stuff, man. I needed it. I got to have it. And that's the world we live in. We see all these messages on TV of things we got to have. Like when we go in the Harley shop. Amen. Come to find out that's probably going to be some small stuff that we sweat later because, man, now the chrome's fitting and we didn't get it clean enough. And The question I want you to start asking yourself, what is the most important thing to me today? I've been talking about a lot of stuff we got to do in the morning, huh? We're going to have to do it while we're fixing them bad hair days. Because we got some stuff we got to deal with in the morning before we work. We're supposed to go to the Lord in prayer, right? We're supposed to give the day over because the, the Bible says deny yourself. But now we need to be like, what is the most important thing to me today? Newsflash, I got it for you. 
It's to serve Jesus Christ. It's to be obedient. It's to do what he wants you to do and not what you want to do. And that is one of the hardest things because the devil likes to slip in these little small problems. Amen? And she's a shout. The devil will throw this little small thing in here and this little small thing in there and this little small thing in there. And next thing you know, this joy that you started the morning out with ain't so joyful anymore, is it? You, you done lost it. Most of the women lost it at the bad hair day. I lost it when I got in the car. Got cut off. Don't, one thing about me, and you'll learn that over time, and most of you know it, is I don't like to let the devil get an edge on me. And this week he did. And the whole time, the whole week, God had always given me the answer. It was what I was going to preach on. He said, ain't it, ain't it funny sometimes how he reaches down and smacks you on the head and says, I done told you how to do it. Don't sweat the small stuff. You're going to preach on it, and here you are, sweating the small stuff. I think sometimes he laughs, amen? He's got to, because he's standing up there, and he's thinking, man, I told him how to handle this. And every time I tell him how to handle it, he goes out and does the opposite. It's kind of like women, what we do. You know, you tell us to do one thing, and we go do the opposite thing. Sometimes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Nothing is as worthless as yesterday's paper. Sorry if you're one of those that stacks up yesterday's paper. The only thing they're good for is starting a fire. Amen? And that's the same thing with all them small problems. The only thing they're good for is starting a fire. And not the, not the good kind of fire. We've got to get to a point where we just start throwing these small things and saying, you know what, God? You take care of it. I'm not going to lose my joy. I'm not going to receive that. And that is a word we all need to start doing. I don't receive that. I don't receive this. I'm going to stay joyful today. I like this one too that I got done. I want you to ask yourself the next time this small little problem jumps in, is this going to matter in a hundred years? Let's, let's put it in real reality. And is this going to matter in ten years? This little thing I'm dealing with, is it really going to matter in ten years? No. And then we could jump back to, is this going to matter in a hundred years? Because in a hundred years I'm going to be in eternity and ain't none of it going to matter, Amen. How much of what you're worrying about right now is going to matter tomorrow? Nothing. You want to know the only thing that I've found that is good about a worrier? Is that they will flip that and use it to meditate. They've already got the skill they need to meditate on God's word. Because I know people that will sit and worry for days and months at a time on one problem. Man, if you flip that and you meditate on a verse of scripture for days and months at a time, how much different would your life be? Amen? Man, fired up. Can I preach a little? We need to live in the light of eternity. That's where we fall short. That's what... We need to get a hold of. That's what's going to make us not sweat the small stuff. We've got to live in the light of eternity. 
If you're saved here this morning, if you're a born-again Christian, you have a place, you have a mansion, you have something far better than this. This is not your home. Nothing here matters except for what you do for Christ. Let me back that up because there is something that does matter. The stuff you don't do that you're supposed to do for Christ. Amen. The stuff that the small little problem got in and you stopped doing what you were supposed to be doing for Christ because you got angry because the small little thing slipped in and you lost your joy so you lost what you were supposed to be doing because guess what? You lost your focus. Amen. That was a lot in a little bit of time and I can't believe I worded it all together without getting it all jumbled up. But that's what it's about. And you hear so much about cancel culture. But what God wants us to be is counterculture. We need to be countercultural. We've got to focus not on what's current, but what's eternal. Man, quit focusing so much on what matters today. Focus more on what matters in eternity. Because if we get stuck in the small things of today, we're not going to do the work that matters in eternity. If we lose our joy and happiness over these small little things, we're not going to see the true joy of seeing somebody get eternity. Because I'm telling you, there's nothing like that. It's not just when you get it. It's seeing somebody else get it. Man, I'm telling you, there's nothing more addicting than that. Seeing somebody get to eternity. Seeing them actually get it. Seeing Christ imparted in them. And then getting to watch them live out their life in Christ. And see him mold them and change them. And I was an addict. And I am still. I'm addicted to working out my salvation. I'm addicted to seeing people get Christ, amen? That's what it's about. If you want to be addicted to something, get addicted to that. Whew. I'm getting ready to wrap things up. When you live in the light of eternity, you realize that the small things you're worrying about aren't going to matter in eternity. And instead, and I love this word because it's what we all do. You want to know what the number one killer in America is right now? Stress. And I've got down, instead of stressing out, you can be happier you can be a happier person. Quit stressing out. Let God handle things. Live in the light of eternity. Don't get stuck in culture. Teach people about Christ and show them what kind of culture really is. What true culture really is. What being a part of something really is. I've got one more verse of scripture that I want to share with you before I close. It's in Proverbs. If I can get this thing to work here. It's in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 24. Can. There we go. If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? The 
That's something I want you to meditate on this week. If I falter in the time of trouble, how small is my strength? You know, if I fail at the little things, how small is my strength? You know how big your strength is? It's my favorite verse in the Bible. It's Philippians 4.13. It's strong enough to do all things because you have Christ in you. And if you do things through him, you can do it all. But when we falter, we're not showing that strength, are we? When we get stuck up in the little times of trouble, we're not imitating that strength, are we? We're not walking in that strength. Man, I love that verse because I had a, I think it was a girlfriend of my son's one time that she used that verse every time she went to bat. She said, every time I bat, I tell myself I can do all things through Christ. Man, what a small thing to use it in. But what such a powerful lesson. She knew she could go up and she could hit that ball if she did in God's strength. Man, that, that to me is amazing, amen? That's what it's about. It's about putting scripture to work in the small things. It's about trusting God in the small things. It's about don't up the small things. They're just small things. But if you keep sweating them, they're going to end up into this big manifestation of things and then it's, we got a real problem on our hands, don't we? Because we done let the devil win. Don't do that. Don't give him a foothold in your life. Live in the light of eternity. Don't sweat the small things. Amen? Say it with me. Don't sweat the small things. Man, I didn't hear it at all. Don't sweat the small things. And I'll say it like this. I ain't ain't, and I, I know ain't ain't a word, so shush. I ain't going to sweat the small things. I'm not going to receive sweating the small things anymore. Amen? That's what it's about right there. I tell you what, if you will not sweat the small things in life, you're going to be a happier person. You're going to walk with more joy. And you're going to walk in strength. Because you know what? I can't not sweat the small things myself. I have to rely on others, right? I have to rely on God. I have to rely on Christ to handle the small things. Sometimes I got to rely on my friends to handle the small things, don't I? Sometimes I got to rely on Hillbilly to handle the small things. Even though I yell at him while he's doing it, but. Don't falter in the time of trouble. When these small things come, take charge. Say, you know what, I don't receive it. This ain't how I'm going to be. I'm not going to get mad. I'm going to walk in the joy of the Lord today. And man, is this going to matter in 50 years? No. Amen. Everybody please stand. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you're here this morning and you've been dealing with this problem of sweating the small things and it's starting to get you a little stressed out, you're starting to see this morning that the small things don't matter so much, this altar is open. Rodney, you want to throw something on low? I want you to ask yourself. Will anyone batter? Will any heart shatter? Down a little lower there, Rodney. Anyone sinking down? Hold on. Hold on. For all the sinners. The weary and weather. The things that I've been doing. Don't in tongues. Hope is lost. Hold on. There's an anchor
Is it hindering my walk? The rage of the storm. Because if it's hindering your walk, walls are closing and in. And if you're sweating the small things, it's hindering your walk. Darkness all alone. This altar's open. You come. You pray. Just praying for you the right daylight. Drop right here at the altar at the foot of the cross. Peace for the you, soul. You know what? I'm not going to receive these small things. There's grace for the morning. I'll be strong. And you feel like trouble. letting go. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff anymore. There's an anchor. But I need your help to do so. Come, you ask. There's an anchor. Come and receive it. If you're here this morning, you don't know the Lord. To all who have faltered, there is an altar. Bring your plea on bended knee. Bow down, bow down. All you sons and daughters, run to the Father. You're not too far from open arms. Come home, come home. Cause there is an anchor in the rage of the storm. When the walls were closing in, in the darkness all alone. Just praying for the daylight. Peace for the soul. There's grace for the morning. as everybody else in here this morning. Lord, let us not let it fall off of us the minute we walk out the door. Because the minute we walk out this door, Lord, I know that the small things are coming. Lord, but you've showed us this morning that there's a way to get around it. Lord, that if we will just live in the light of eternity, if we will walk in your strength, that you will help us take care of the small things. Lord, that you won't allow a pile in the side. You won't let it pile up into some big problem. Lord, we praise you and we thank you this morning for all that you do for us. Lord, I ask that you put a hedge of protection over everybody here, everybody watching online. Lord, that you put a traveling mercies over everybody that's traveling. Lord, I just want to praise you one more time for how good and perfect and loving you are. That you care about the little things that go on in our life. That we can't bother you too much. That you want to listen to every little thing that we have to say. You want to know about every little problem. You want us to confess it to you, Lord. You want us to walk in your strength and your joy. And man, how much of a instruction you gave us this morning. Lord, I ask that you keep it deep in our hearts and our minds. Lord, most of all, that you give us a person this week that we might be able to share this with, that we might be able to impart that in them, Lord, and show them what, man, what we learned this morning from you. Lord, that we can show your joy to other people. And we ask it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I love you and you are dismissed. Don't Anyone better Saturday. Saturday. With Saturday. Any heart shattered. What? Anyone. Oh, Father, say something in the back. Don't forget to get oh. it.